Welcome back everybody, my name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So today is going to be another In the Garden episode. I know I've been posting a lot of those here lately, but there's a reason why. Things are happening in the garden, and I promise we're about to get back to the house build. Actually, I've got some pretty exciting news to share about that, but it'll be on another episode that's upcoming. So yes, we will get back to the house, but for now, we've got a little bit of work to do in the garden. Start tearing into everything. I want to give you a quick look how much the garden has exploded over the last couple of days. Just crazy, absolutely crazy. So here's the okra. If you watched the last video, <laughs> there was just, I don't know, five, six, seven pieces of okra, little, you know, little plants that had came up. So I'm seeing a couple spots, like there's a plant that come up, but the top is missing. So I don't know. So there's going to be just a few spots that we need to plant again. But overall, I mean, nice and thick. This is uh, just about ready to be thinned out. Actually, that is what we're going to do today because I've got quite a bit that's growing on top of each other. And I like to thin my plants a little early to make sure I don't disturb too many roots. But I like to give them enough time to come up like this so that I can pick out the healthy ones. So okra doing very well. Just a couple spots to plant there. Beans, my goodness. Last year, I couldn't grow a bean to save my life. Had a little bit different compost this year. Exploding. They're all coming up. They're doing very well. These are uh, Blue Lake bush beans, if I remember correctly. Couldn't get my Romas this year. My local seed distributors were sold out. Actually, they couldn't even get them in this year. It was kind of weird. But we're going to try these. We, we love bush beans. Got some more over here. Doesn't like we really have to do any planting in these boxes. Corn. Impressing the heck out of me again this year. Just coming up. Looks like every seed came up. No spots to plant that I can see. Doing really well in this bed. A lot of thinning out to do here. So potatoes. This is the one that everybody was telling me, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't cut a potato eye off and just put it straight in the dirt. Well, I did. And look, every single potato plant has came up. Nothing else to plant here either. Every single one. There's that last one coming up right over there. So very happy with these. We're just gonna leave them alone. Let them do their thing. Over here is zucchini. I planted, put some seeds down every so often about where I thought I wanted to plant. Looks like just about everything has came up. I don't see nothing to plant there. Kind of the same thing with squash. Doing really well. Now the only thing I do notice in this bed, holy moly, I have a tremendous amount of weeds coming up. So something was in my compost. I gotta get these while they're young. Something was in my compost and whenever I put it out and disturbed it, this one exploded with weeds. What's so weird is everywhere else I put the compost, I'm not seeing much. That one's got a little bit of weeds in it I'll work on, but practically none in that bed or that bed. Same compost. Really, really weird, but I'll get on top of that. Over here, odd story. I've got some cantaloupes that are coming up, so I'm gonna thin those out. And then the uh, a lot of people have been asking about the cucumbers. Struggled last year, couldn't get cucumbers to come up, save my life. This year I couldn't find a specific variety, so I went to the store and bought some plants, put those in, they immediately started yellowing up, looking bad. That one got damaged by the wind. This one broke completely off on the other side here, and they were yellowing up, just about to die. All of a sudden, come back out here, they're greening up. So I guess they went through some sort of transplant shock. Don't really know there. These are a different variety that I planted by seed. They look extremely healthy. Almost tempted just to let these run since they're doing so well in this compost and not full uh, with these store-bought plants anymore. But as you can see, they are getting a lot greener. Just the last video, they were as yellow as could be. So I've got something going on. Somebody said I might have crows in the garden. I, uh, I've yet to ever see them out here, but look, more bean plants just coming up at random out here. I did not put beans here. I did not plant beans here. <laughs> They're coming up. So I don't know if I got a little field mouse or field rat or something that's burrowing out here in the garden. But my bean seeds, I have noticed this bed over here, I'm missing some bean spots. And all of a sudden, I'm having beans popping up everywhere over here. So some, some sort of critters out here digging must be taking my seeds and putting them over there. Mighty strange. This bed looks good. I uh, did a mixture of corn and beans, but well, I say it looks good. This is gonna be the one that I have to replant more than anything, so something happened here. 
some corn and some bean spots are uh, are missing but we've got enough to work with we'll work on that blueberry bushes looking really good blooming out i'm gonna gotta get some specialized fertilizer for them here before long we did find us another muscadine grapevine it's blooming out left and right i'm gonna get this planted this is the one that we planted last year it is starting to bloom out everywhere good sign a couple more uh blueberries and struggling a little bit over here had a cantaloupe right there that is now gone one little cantaloupe coming up there one cantaloupe there and one there i'm gonna leave those alone let them do their thing but i am going to have to plant right there i don't know what happened to that one cantaloupe that i had and then look at here that almost looks like uh, one coming up down there something's messing with my seeds i've never had that problem i don't see mole mounds i don't see where nothing's digging up underneath don't really see where something's digging on top and i never catch animals out here so very strange let's get to thinning all right so this is my silver queen sweet corn as far as this goes i'm still experimenting last year i think i left them all about six inches apart they did exceptionally well in the compost really really well normally i'd never plant that close together on traditional in the ground gardening but compost is so much richer than just dirt they did great so i think i'm going to leave these around four to six inches again this year. I'll let some stay a little closer. I've got to rush off to the store tomorrow. I got a lot of stuff to pick up for the house build. And I'm gonna try to get me a couple of those cattle panels that I'm gonna put in this position right here. So as this corn gets taller, I'm gonna feed them through those cattle panels, attach them to some T-post. And I think those will support the corn from blowing over. Because in a tight bed like this, it's hard to come back and really heal corn up good. Plus, compost is so loose it doesn't really want to hold corn well in the wind i really struggled with that last year so i'm definitely gonna to have to do some way of supporting the corn so i guess i'm just gonna pull these out there's not a whole lot of thinning i think i'm gonna do there's one tell you what i'm missing corn over there that one's still got a lot of the roots i'm gonna go put a seed and these corn stalks that i'm pulling up over there in my bare spot typically when you pull them up like this they don't really make it but if they do, it's worth a shot. All right, so I brought some plants over that were still intact, full roots from the uh, other garden over there. However, like I said, I typically do not have good luck pulling plants up and transplanting them. It's just too much shock, you damage roots. But while I'm right here, I'll put a plant in the ground in some of these bare spots, and I'll put a fresh seed right behind it. And whichever one makes it, makes it. The other thing that I forgot to mention, anytime I have corn that's really close together like this, I try not to pull the plant up beside it because it will disturb the roots of the next plant. What I'll do then is just pinch it off with my fingers, leave the roots in the ground, it'll die off then I don't disturb the other plant right beside it. As far as my beans go, really I should probably do about three to a row here because they like to bush out. But I think I'm gonna push my luck and do four to a row and see what happens. All right, so the cantaloupe seem to be the only thing that's really struggling. I kind of knew that could be a potential problem. They like to be planted quite a bit later than this, but quite a few are trying to come up. All right, as far as my squash and zucchini go, I didn't really run seeds down an entire road like I normally do. I just put them to where I thought the plant should go. These plants get huge, so three per short row is plenty. So all I'm gonna do is just go in, find the healthier looking one, pull the bad one out.
going to experiment a little. I'm going to leave these two beds of beans closer together than I normally would. That's the beauty of gardening like this. I can always play around and experiment. All right, last year I did my ochre probably eight to 10 inches apart and it did exceptionally well. Best I've ever had as far as ochre goes. I think I'm gonna push the limits, do it a little tighter this year. You can always pull them up if things don't look good. But uh, like I said, last year was so successful. I'm gonna see if I can get a little tighter this year, keep notes, and eventually I'll figure out what this ground will support. All right, well, we have everything mostly thinned. There's a few areas I left a little thick in some of the beds. I always do that. A second thinning is perfectly normal. If there's a couple of plants that don't really look great, I'll leave a couple of them together until I can find one that is really gonna make it and looks the healthiest. But it looks a whole lot better now that everything is thin. Yes, I'm planting very tight this year. We're gonna see what happens. If it bites me, at least I know for next year, but you never know till you try. So everything is looking really good at the moment. I did have to plant some bare spots in that bed and a few over there. So maybe four or five days, we'll see if we have some seeds coming up. But we're not done just yet. So the next thing to talk about, remember I uh, planted the little, it was pine trees and peppers. I'm starting to see some stuff come up that I think might be the peppers. They're coming up everywhere in there. So exactly what it looks like. So we'll keep an eye on that. If we wind up getting a bunch of bell peppers coming up there, we'll put them over here as well. This is all my bells, jalapenos, and uh, banana peppers here. I can't remember if I addressed this or not. Several people said, hey, you're messing up planting your peppers side by side. They'll cross pollinate. And that is exactly right. Last year, we planted peppers together out there in those small boxes, and they did cross pollinate. But believe it or not, we enjoyed it. We had Cuban peppers that cross pollinated with jalapenos. And our jalapenos turned out kind of stubby, fat, and sweet. Uh, I enjoyed it. I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing what happens when they cross-pollinate. I kind of like that kind of stuff right there. So a little bit of weeding to do in this bed, but they're looking okay. Coming along, they're actually starting to green up too. They were quite yellow last week. So I think everything just kind of went through a transplant shock. They're, they're looking better. I'm excited to see what's happening over here. Don't really see any pine trees yet, but I do see peppers. We still have one more thing before we wrap this up. So yeah, I'm at the store today, Sam's of all places. Go inside, they have beautiful citrus trees right at the front door. Couldn't help myself. I knew there was one more citrus tree that I wanted. So I got to looking around, looking around. Sure enough, I found my Tangelo. That is one citrus I kind of really do like. So I've added one more to the, I guess, orchard, we'll call it out here. We'll see how well it does. I'm gonna continue to water all these in take care of them 
and hopefully they can survive the transplant shock of warm weather. We shall see. Well, thank y'all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed yet another gardening episode. I know some of y'all do. Like I said, we're gonna get back on the house here very quickly. I've got some good news to share about some lumber. I have spent the last few days running back and forth trying to find some. I've been successful in some areas. I still have more to get, more work to do, but I did not want to start raising walls in the house until I knew that I could dry this house in. So we're getting very close. I'll share that episode soon. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.